Today I'm going to show you how to make the simplest line following robot ever. But before we get started, there are a few things you're going to need. Two GM2 motors with 69mm plastic wheels, one 6 inch fretboard, 12 inch of red, yellow, and black wire, 6 to 10 3 and a half inch rubber bands, a 1000 ohm and 47000 ohm resistor, one infrared emitter and sensor, one 10,000 ohm potentiometer, one TCA 0372 operational amplifier chip, paper clip, the wooden wheel, and one battery holder that holds four AA batteries, and wire cutters. Now take your three wires and measure out approximately three centimeters of red wire. Take your wire cutters and cut. Now, Strip the insulation off the end of the wire. It's important to have exposed wire at the right length to make sure that you complete the circuit in the breadboard. Here's wire that is too short. It's better for it to be longer than shorter because longer wire means that our circuit will be continued. Now that you've finished your first wire, cut one more red wire the same length, six black wire the same length, and one yellow wire that is the same length. You'll also need one yellow wire that is six centimeters long. Now that we've prepped our wires, we want to move on to the preparation of the resistors. Take the lead of your resistor and bend it over about 90 degrees. Make sure that both leads are facing the same direction. Once you've done that, Take your wire cutters and cut out off most of the leads so that you have about a centimeter left. Make sure to do this for both resistors so that when putting them in the breadboard, you have no troubles. Now that we have our wires prepared, it's time to get out our breadboard and put on the motors. Once you have your breadboard, take one of the three and a half inch rubber bands and wrap it around the breadboard like so. Make sure that there is an X pattern on the bottom of the breadboard on this sheet of metal. Take your two motors and insert them into the breadboard as shown. It's important that when they're put on, they're resting against each other like this. Ensure that the rubber bands are around the motors accordingly and that they're resting against each other properly. This will ensure that your robot goes the direction you want it to and that the motors do not slip. Now with what's left of your red and black wire, cut one of each color about 5 centimeters long and strip the insulation off each end. At the very back of the breadboard, plug the black wire into the negative terminal on each side. Then plug the red wire into the positive terminal on each side. Plug in your 1000 ohm resistor at the front of the breadboard going from the positive terminal to port J2. 
Take your clear infrared emitting diode and insert the long lead into hole G2 and the short lead into hole F1. Using your thumb to push the leads down, bend the LED over so that it's pointing directly to the floor. You must have the leads in the right place, or else your circuit will not work. Connect one of your 6cm wires from the negative terminal over to port J1. Take your 74,000 ohm resistor and plug it in on the opposite side into the positive terminal and port A1. Now take your black infrared receiving diode and connect the long lead to port E2 and the short lead to port D1. Holding the leads into place with your thumb while you bend the receiving head downward. If your emitter and sensor are pointing outwards like this, adjust them so that they are pointing towards a mutual point in the center. Once you're finished with the resistors, plug your potentiometer into port J9, 10, and 11 with the wheel facing towards the right of the breadboard. Plug a red wire into port J9 going to the positive terminal. A black wire from port J11 to the negative terminal. Now place your chip into the center of the breadboard with the pin indicated by the small dot in port E4. Now plug a black wire from the negative terminal to port A2. A red wire from the positive terminal to A5. And a black wire from the negative terminal to port A7. Take your last two black wires and plug them on the right side from the negative to J6 and from the negative to J7. Double check your wires to make sure all red wires are plugged into the positive terminal and all black wires are plugged into the negative. Take your yellow wires, plugging the short one from J10 to J5. and the long one from J4 to C1. Grab your paper clip and wooden wheel and bend the paper clip as shown. Using a double wrapped rubber band, mount the paper clip and wheel. Now grab your battery holder and a rubber band. There's an on and off switch on the battery holder. Make sure this is facing downwards so that you have access to it once the robot is fully assembled. 
Carefully mount your battery holder, avoiding any unnecessary paper clip bending. Front of the board, plug the red wire from your right motor into port C4, and the black wire into the negative terminal on row 13. Then take the red wire from your left motor and plug it into port E4, and the black wire into the positive terminal on row 9. Plug your black wire into the negative on row 39 and your red wire into the positive on row 43. Now that everything is plugged in, put your plastic wheels onto the motors. Give yourself a minute to tidy up any loose wires, realign your LEDs, and check to make sure everything is in place correctly. To follow the line, the robot uses sensors to detect the reflection of infrared light. But whether or not these sensors work correctly depends on the sensitivity set by the potentiometer. To adjust the sensitivity, turn on your robot and hold it over the white surface with the black line to the left. Make sure all wheels are touching the floor. Turn the potentiometer all the way to the left counterclockwise so the right motor is rotating. Then swing the robot back and forth over the line, making micro adjustments until the right wheel is rotating over the black line and the left wheel is rotating over the white surface. If your robot is still having trouble recognizing the line, try adding another layer of tape to widen the black line. 